Are you a joyful person? At times, your heart will make you smile when your body is in pain. Jehovah's Witnesses are constantly reminded that they are supposed to be happy. They have speeches, songs, and movies reminding them constantly of how they are the happiest people and how they should always rejoice. Always rejoice. This is one of the most subtle ways to keep members indoctrinated that I don't see often talked about. Jehovah's Witnesses are constantly told that they are the happiest people on earth and that they should look happy even when they are not happy to attract others into the religion. Members are constantly told to not forget to smile when they're out in the ministry since their smiles can be used to convert other people. Take a deep breath, focus on the value of the message, and smile. This can help us to relax. And often our smile is contagious. And by being told that they're happy and being told to smile, Jehovah's Witnesses are gaslit into thinking that they are happy because they keep hearing that they're happy and they keep seeing other people who look happy. But nothing could be further from the truth. Jehovah's Witnesses are an isolationist group that believe that they and they alone have the one true religion, and hence, the one shot at true happiness. They're constantly told that Jehovah will give them happiness and fulfillment if they are spiritual. But their hateful and supremacist views of the world and how it's in a perpetual state of decadence makes them inherently unhappy with the world. And what's more, Jehovah's Witnesses are taught to expect the end of the world would come soon, destroying anyone who isn't a perfect Jehovah's Witness. And since being a perfect Jehovah's Witness is impossible, they are in a perpetual state of anxiety because they feel they could be destroyed at any moment. This sort of anxiety is needed to keep members indoctrinated and active in the cult, because the more you feel like you're failing Jehovah, the more you'll try to compensate by being active in the religion. However, every member has to believe they are the only ones pretending to be happy and exemplary in the religion to maintain the illusion. After all, if they all realize that no one is capable of being a perfect Jehovah's Witness, then the pressure would be off because they would realize how futile it is to try. They have to believe that everyone is achieving happiness. Toxic positivity is used to keep members under that illusion. Toxic positivity is when you force someone to maintain a positive outlook at all times, disregarding any negative emotions or experiences. And it's needed in pretty much every high control group. You don't have to keep reminding people to smile if they're happy, but you absolutely do if you are in a high control group. Toxic positivity is perfect when the main attraction of a group is an unattainable goal. For example, it's used all the time in pyramid schemes. Multi-level marketing schemes are based on the promise of success if you apply yourself enough. However, statistically, only about 5% of people will get more than they invested into it. So, how do you keep everyone working hard? With toxic positivity, of course. MLMs are constantly talking about how happy they make their sellers and customers. And sellers are encouraged to post about how happy and successful the MLM is making them as a strategy to actually succeed. This causes something weird to happen, where everyone is faking happiness and success while being fooled into thinking they are the only ones who are faking it because each member doesn't know everyone else is faking it too. And this is extremely true with the Jehovah's Witness as well. Jehovah's Witnesses are reminded that they're happy and they keep being reminded to smile, so they fool not only people outside the cult, but people inside the cult. They are told that people outside are always watching, and that's why it's important to look happy, so they know that they too can be happy if they join in. However, few people outside the cult actually fall for the creepy and vacant smile from members. Instead, their fake happiness is used to keep others indoctrinated, because every Jehovah's Witness is surrounded by people who keep smiling and pretending that they are happy. As a result, every Jehovah's Witness will believe that they are the exception. They are the only ones who don't get happiness from being in the cult. And hence, the issue is with them, not with their religion. 
These feelings make Jehovah's Witnesses feel guilty in silence because they believe there is something wrong with them when they don't enjoy the boring meetings, the useless preaching work, and the depressing talks. Because everyone around them is faking happiness successfully. That's very useful to get followers indoctrinated, because Jehovah's Witnesses are encouraged to suppress negative emotions like doubt, fear, and sadness. No Jehovah's Witness is ever allowed to associate any negative emotions with the religion. Even questioning the effectiveness of the indoctrinated material is considered as something only evil, faithless apostates do in their efforts to take people out of the truth. And some who aren't really apostates can cause just as much trouble as the apostates do by their negative talk and criticism. Suppose that, out of curiosity, you get into a discussion forum with individuals who claim to be Jehovah's Witnesses, and someone starts asking questions. Uh, what did you think of last month's broadcast? Did you really find it encouraging? Or do you think the brothers who write Watchtower articles are living in the real world? I wonder if they realize just how hard it is out here. And then a few others join in with their own negative comments. Now, you don't know whether these individuals are apostates or just brothers and sisters who are in serious spiritual trouble. Since members aren't allowed to associate any neutral or negative feelings with their religion, they also aren't allowed to express when they feel something is wrong in the cult, preventing them from waking up and from waking other people up. After all, it's only when you realize that your religion is damaging that you start to wake up. If no one is allowed to say out loud that their religion can be damaging, then waking up is harder because Jehovah's Witnesses aren't allowed or even used to think that their religion can be anything but positive. And this is done with one of the most heartbreaking aspects of the religion as well, disfellowshipping, which is considered a loving provision. Jehovah's Witnesses have strict disciplinary measures for anyone who associates their religion with something negative, and they deal with them by disfellowshipping and shunning the dissenting member, forcing everyone, even their family, to completely shun them and pretend they don't exist. This serves a dual purpose. First, it keeps people who wake up isolated and demonized so they can't wake other people up. And second, it keeps members indoctrinated. After all, they see just how much this fellowship people suffer, and they are afraid of being disfellowshipped as well if they can suppress their natural emotions. This can make some spiral into depression, since they feel guilty for the way their religion treats them, and they believe they feel bad because they aren't spiritual enough which only makes them more harder in the cult and feel even more guilty when that doesn't bring them the happiness that they were promised. Any lack of happiness is usually considered not a mental health issue or an issue with your material conditions, but a lack of spiritual faith or reliance on God. Instead of being encouraged to get mental help, Jehovah's Witnesses are encouraged to speak to the elders when they aren't feeling happy, so the elders try to re-indoctrinate them. And they'll do this by showing them verses of people in the Bible who dealt with hard times but were happy, inviting them to compare themselves to ancient Bible characters. Jehovah's Witnesses are told this is the solution, but obviously this solves nothing. So instead of dealing with the reason why they are unhappy, a Jehovah's Witness will usually relent and end up invalidating their authentic emotions, reminding others to smile like they do, thinking that that is spreading positivity. Because that's the only way they're taught to be happy, by pushing down negative emotions and by putting on a fake smile. That's why Jehovah's Witnesses are always nice and smiling, because they're fooled into believing that telling each other to smile is a positive thing, when in reality it's an extremely toxic behavior that can be very dangerous to people. If someone isn't smiling, they just don't feel like smiling, and there's nothing wrong with it. When Jehovah's Witnesses tell each other to look happy and to smile, they invalidate their emotions and encourage others to ignore and suppress the negative emotions they feel. Negative emotions that can wake them up. And that's why telling others to smile more in the religion is so important. Because it demonizes those negative emotions, making others believe it's wrong to experience them. But... As someone who is a mental health expert after watching Inside Out, I know that negative emotions are okay. A huge part of my waking up process involves realizing that it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be mad. It's okay 
to feel outrage. And in fact, when you're waking up from indoctrination, those feelings are not only okay, those feelings are absolutely needed to wake up and to keep going. I had to go through a huge journey before I realized what I believe every woman has realized by now, that telling someone to smile is extremely annoying and toxic and only encourages people to create a false facade and to deny their own feelings. Baby, I think you'd be a little bit more successful here if you smiled more often. When you wake up, it's important to learn to validate those feelings instead of hiding them behind a smile like you've been taught to do. But it's very hard to do when you've been indoctrinated to pretend to be happy all the time and to tell others to smile thinking that's positivity instead of toxic positivity. That's why it's very important to remember something. You don't owe anyone your smile. If someone is telling you to smile, they are not hoping you're happy. They're asking you to pretend you are for their sake. I feel like I couldn't explain this issue better than a woman who has had to deal with this toxic positivity and society's expectations way more than me. A few months ago, I was at Home Goods, and this old man, I, you know, I'm, it's very overstimulating, right? You go into a grocery store or you go into any kind of store and the music and the lights and all yes, this stuff, a lot. Like, like you're focused. So I'm like looking at stuff like, oh, wow, shiny, sparkly, ooh, nice. And so I'm looking at stuff and this old guy's like, smile, life's too short to frown. And for the first time in my life, I just looked at him and I was like, this is just my face. It's just <laughs> resting. I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not sad. I'm just looking. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything. I was like, I know, but. But also. Like. Yeah, I don't have to walk around smiling for you. Like I'm just, right. I'm focused. Like right. I'm sorry if if that's not if that's not what you want to see. That I'm supposed to be picture perfect Barbie right. all the time because exactly. it's not going to happen. Reminding people to smile won't make them happy. It only encourages them to hide the problem, making it worse. If you woke up from a cult, you probably have a ton of reasons to frown and to be angry. If you truly want people to be happy, instead of asking them to smile. Encourage them to express themselves and to validate their feelings so they can find out why they aren't smiling. Help them in their problems. And next time someone tells you to smile, just tell them no. You don't need to perform for anyone. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. Feel those feelings instead of running away from them because you never know where those valuable feelings will take you. After all, those are the feelings that woke you up. Those are the feelings that let you know when something is wrong. So be kind to other people. No one needs a reminder to smile more. You don't need to pretend you're happy all the time anymore. Validate your feelings and you'll end up smiling not because someone asks you to, but because you want to.